Initiating podcast download. Prepare yourself. Put on your spandex. Lace up your boots. Wrap your wrists. Hide your razor blade. Head to gorilla position. Grease up your hair. Apply baby oil. Okay, apply more baby oil. Get into gimmick. Keep your ears open and your mouth shut. Have fun and be safe out there, brother. Welcome to I'm on Wrestling. Now your host, Gregory Iron. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Iron on Wrestling with Gregory Iron. I'm your host, Gregory Iron, and this is episode 250. Boy, am I witty, because I can rhyme. <laughs> I just did that. I just... Pardon the interruption. Okay. I'm your co-host, Aaron Bauer, and uh-huh. this is episode 250. Uh-huh. And, well, Greg's wit is very shitty. Okay. What could, what could you rhyme with, with uh, 250? Um, this episode is like all of your clothes. They're thrifty, because you get them from the thrift store. Uh, I haven't got uh, many of my clothes from the thrift store in a long time. No? Where, where are you getting them now? Um, Through one of the Ortiz? Well, sometimes. SBS if, and if that's I, no BS? Only if I get a uh, good design uh, made. Well, I got an first. idea. What? Well, we'll get to it later. No, please. Oh. Say it now. Okay. So there it is. Oh, Dean Chard oh. is on a cloud. Okay, Patreon subscriber Dean Chard. Is yeah. he? Yeah, good friend. Okay. Yep. Well, he's on a cloud. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Wait, did he die? No, no, no. He is alive okay. on a cloud fishing. Okay, okay. All right. Fishing with a pole. Dean, let us know before we get the design made which hand you can fish uh, better with. He does have cerebral palsy like me. He's my uh-huh. CP brother. But uh, go ahead, continue. Okay, well, then obviously you're on the on the shirt, too. Maybe we're helping each other fish? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's two hands. Yes. Uh, helping hands. Okay. On uh, on one cloud though. All right. That is separating into two clouds. I got gotcha. you. And you're you're holding each other's bad hands so that you don't separate from each other while fishing for bluegill. Can can I sit on his lap in the wheelchair? Yes. As long as I have consent from Dean. I think he'd like that. Okay. All I right. mean, I, I don't know him well enough to speak for him, but if it's my design, you're sitting on his lap in a wheelchair. Motorized? Uh, I'm not sure, but I do know that Dean has a mustache, so uh, this might be your best design, even well, though it's ridiculous. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to be giving him, a, or he's going to give you a mustache ride. Well, no. I was going to say we could add an alpaca also helping us, but he's he's too distracted trying to sniff Dean's thick luscious mustache uh-huh. and and uh dean's got like a five dollar bill falling out of his pocket but it, it's like five pounds so i don't know what that equals um because he's oh, from england he's from uh, yeah. the motherland yes yes so uh this is a great design that i think juan hortiz and of the dead designs would create in fact i mean they've created designs for every major champion in professional wrestling including now nxt champion all ego ethan page like so and that's soon another to be world champion Soon to be AEW World Champion Dean Chard. Well, I had no idea that he's Dean, in the top ten. So he would be the first wrestler with cerebral palsy in AEW. Wow. So I. Uh, <laughs> well, I, they only want good ones. Well, you know what? Okay. Well, now we got some heat. But uh, Juan will make any design for you, or perhaps maybe your company logo, or just some sort of piece of art for friend, family member. Maybe you want a piece of art for yourself hung in your living room or something ridiculous. So you, you eat could... pieces of art for breakfast. Okay. Um, so you can contact Juan Ortiz and of the Dead Designs, and uh, even though he's created designs for such notable wrestlers, he can still create a design for you at a fair price. And if you mention Iron on Wrestling, you could save 20 bucks on your first design. So go follow 
of the dead designs on Instagram, send them a little message. Why don't you? Or you could contact them on their Facebook at facebook.com slash of the dead designs or go to the website of the dead dot weebly dot com because of the dead designs is bringing your artwork to life. Is it weebly dot com? Yeah. Okay. We dot weebly. Yes. No. Uh, well, sometimes it's dot org. It's not dot org. Don't that, listen- does that mean if you're in the government? Uh, I think org, org is like a like an organization, oh, like, oh. you know, like a, like fundraisers and type that type of deal. Uh-huh. Um, I think that's how that works. All right. Um, but uh, hey, one more plug. Um, other than butt GNC, plug? No, no, oh, no. I that's just... that's the girls that message you on Snapchat, uh, which we're not even going to get hey, into. They're not all girls. That that's fair, but we don't want you to punch them in the butt. <laughs> While they have the plug-in, because I think that would lead to some damage that would... Uh, well, I'm, I'm not going to hit a female. Okay, okay. Um, we will plug TNT Health, because we do care about your fitness journey later in the show. But, you know, uh, breaking news. Yes. You know, I, I, I don't know if you know this, but SummerSlam is going to be in Cleveland. I heard. On August 3rd. Cleveland Brown Stadium, first time ever having a wrestling event in that stadium. But there's going to be a lot of events happening around... SummerSlam week and a lot of an influx of wrestling fans coming into our great city and one of the go-to food eatery restaurant drinking establishments it's a lot of those things and one that I feel like many people visiting our great city of Cleveland should visit is Brew Nuts because they do coffee they do gourmet donuts but they also do beer or brews, because that's kind of in the name as well. And wouldn't you know, they're also doing a pro wrestling trivia night the weekend of SummerSlam, that Thursday, August 1st, at Brew Nuts. That's pretty exciting, huh? Yeah, yeah. So, like, um, if you go to that, would you then be part of the Brew, brew, brew World Order? You know what? They have two shirts that they made yes. to sell, um, yeah. and it's part of some giveaways in the trivia. And uh, I'm going to send that over because that's not one of the shirts they created. That is, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they Man, didn't that's, that's do uh, that. Easy, right there. Oh my god, I'm going to send it over to them. They did make a uh, Brew Nuts 216 shirt with a uh, yeah. melting donut skull on the back. Now, and, do you think Steve will get pissed at that? I, no, I think he'll jokingly say that that's gimmick infringement. Yeah. Uh, but I think he would be flattered by it, actually. Um, and they also made a, a SummerSlam logoed shirt with uh, some donuts wrestling in the ring. But the more important thing about this trivia is not only can you win prizes and you'll have a good time, and there'll probably be some costume contests involved as well, I will be hosting the Brunuts Wrestling Trivia Night from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Oh, wow. Brunuts in Cleveland, so they couldn't get anybody good. Michael Cash will be with me, my co-host. Okay, so at least they'll have one good host. There. Michael Cash, a longtime uh, backstage interviewer and commentator for Cleveland All Pro Wrestling back in the day, and of course Pro Wrestling Ohio and Prime Wrestling. Uh, we will be uh, tag teaming this event uh, over in the Cleveland area. So if you're coming into town early and uh, you're looking for other things to do, around WrestleMania weekend, you or WrestleMania weekend, SummerSlam weekend, you want to make it wrestling-centric, stop by Brunet 7-9, August 1st, and uh, that's going to be 6501 Detroit Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, and uh, you can come in early, you know, get the party, party started before 7, they're open pretty late, and uh, I think it'll be a nice little uh, brew ha-ha, brew nut ha-ha. Yeah, that is a ha-ha. Yeah. Um, you know, Michael Cash is... Maybe most famous for the skits that he conducted with uh, Hobo Joe and myself. They they were arguably the most iconic skits in pro wrestling Ohio history that he was a part of. I yeah. will say that. I've been told they were great. You know, when I saw him today, he he desperately wanted to see you. And I said, Mikey, what are you doing next week? You should come over and uh, do the podcast. And he was... Uh, he was excited to be a part of it. So you think we could have him in studio next week? No. Um, I have okay. a restraining order against Michael that Cash. That is not true. That is not true. Michael Cash is a good man. We also, both uh, both of the ladies in our life are named Hannah. What are the odds of that? 
Uh, seems like a pretty popular name. We like wrestling. Our our significant others are named Hannah. Uh-huh. We enjoy donuts. I feel like I should get him as a new co-host. I think that'd be a great idea. Yeah? Yeah, bring him on done? over here, and let's see if we get a three-way, and then one of us will battle to the death. Oh, no. Well, um, speaking of death, uh, a lot of people died last week. I don't know if you want to talk about that up the ba- off the bat, or uh, is that too dark for you? No, I'm all right with it. Um, or do you want to talk th- about coming from the hospital? <laughs> I was going to say, uh, thankfully, my dad hasn't died. Yeah, I, di- I didn't know if I wanted to make the uh, your dad dying joke first. or um... uh, He's living, so okay, uh, we delayed uh, recording for a day, but he will have to uh, go through open-heart surgery on Friday morning. So if uh, you people out there do the pray thing or, or thoughts or whatever, well, I'll welcome them all. But, um, yeah, we had a, a a little bit of an emergency, I guess a big emergency here last, I think it was on Thursday. Uh, my dad and uh, my boys, all of us were in the kitchen talking sports and fun stuff and having a great old time. And then uh, Pops had said, hey, you know, um, it's um, big garbage day tomorrow. And I don't know if you have that out in in your city, but once a week here, uh, <laughs> the garbage gets taken to the curb. But all you you can only take so much. Yeah. But on Fridays you can take as much as you want. On every Friday you can take as much as you want. Okay, so so then your dad proceeded to try to pick you up and take <laughs> you to the <laughs> curb. Or... Yeah. <laughs> this, this is wow. You're on today. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, it, we had an old lawnmower, and he's like, well, you know, let's just take this lawnmower out, put it out in the front. And I said, it won't even last. You know, somebody will probably, some some scrapper will come yep, out and pick it up within happens. five minutes. Yep. So he got the mower out, and the kids um, helped out. And then they left, and he came back in the house, and he said, hey. Uh, and it looked like he was selling. He looked like he was overselling, like a... Like a heart punch or something. Yeah. And I said, what's going on? And he said, uh, dizzy, weak, all these, you know, my jaw hurts. And, well, um, uh, I don't know. I, I would guess around midnight uh, he was knocking on my bedroom door and said, hey, I just called 911. I think I'm having a heart attack. Mm-hmm. So uh, 911 showed up. Not the wrestler from ECW. Okay. No choke slams. <laughs> but... Um, they arrived and took him out and uh, took him to the hospital, and they found uh, 80%, 90%, and 100% blockages in the, um, what are those, ventricles? Yeah. And so uh, initially they thought they were going to be able to do a stent, but they can't because the blockage is too bad, and so it's going to have to be the full open-heart surgery. Oh, so. yeah. But he is uh, he's in good spirits, recovering uh, from, you know, uh, not uh, feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> so for, but this has been happening for a while because you had, I something was leading up to this because you had even mentioned not too long ago, hey, I never even see your dad anymore when I come over. It was literally like a week or two ago because I was just like, I mean, he 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 lives upstairs from you, so like. Usually he's like down, like making a little small talk and whatever, and it's just uh, like it's been months. Yeah, and I rarely I there'll there'll be like days where I come over here and I I don't see him one time. Right, he had stopped even just like walking down the stairs and stuff. And when I would ask him, you know, it's kind of like you're uh, almost like you, stupid guy bullshit. Like yeah, no, oh, I'm all right. Yeah, and he kept saying oh, maybe maybe I have asthma or something. Mm. And he went to the doctors just earlier in the week and he kept saying, I think it's in my lungs or something. You know, it must be this weather or whatever, but it's the heart. So, yeah. So, so, um, they're doing the surgery this Friday. Yes. Okay. And, uh, why are they waiting so long? Like, what's the exact status of everything right now? Or is that the earliest they can do it? Or I think that's the earliest they could do it. Now, they they weren't sure that he was going to be strong enough to withstand a an, uh, a procedure like that. Yeah. You know, that's because it's a major surgery. And so I think they're going to take something from his leg and then uh, put it to his heart. And I, I'm not sure of the whole thing. Like... I'm real bad with stuff like that. You yeah. know, I'm just 
there because I'm the emergency contact. And really, you know, there should be somebody way more qualified. Somebody yeah. that, like, is better at being organized and understanding things. Even though I work in a, you know, as a uh, health care yeah. person. I, I just, you know, a lot of times my brain just goes off in a different direction when... I'm hearing all this stuff. Plus, when it's somebody that you're that close to. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just feel like it's like an awkward situation. And then, like, um, I don't know. When we talked on the phone about it a couple days ago, I was trying to talk about, like, you know, where you were mentally. How are you feeling right now? Like, um, because it's a weird weird headspace to be in. Because, right, like, I feel like you you stay optimistic because you, you think, like, well, Okay, this procedure is going to happen and everything's going to be better. But like, are are you are you concerned? Are you like, is yeah, he concerned? Yeah, there's concern, but um, you know, I don't know. He's he's one of them dudes. that's like I don't really understand why they would want to save me. He's like, I'm an old man. What am I contributing to oh, society? Yeah, you know, not not in a dark way. I mean, I guess it is in a dark sure. way, but he's just like, it doesn't really make sense. Well, you know, spend your time and money on somebody who will. You know, be productive in the future, not this old man that's already yeah. lived his life. Yeah, but I th- I think sometimes like we we tend to forget the impact like of those that we make on those close to us. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, ah, yeah. my fucking life sucks and blah blah blah. Like my dad used to say that shit. I wish I was dead. Like, or I'm better off dead. And it's like, well, I don't know about that, man. Right. Like, he's probably gonna make a lot of people upset. You know? Like, I I mean, I have days now where it's like, and we didn't have the best relationship, but it's like. I still have random days where, like, it, I start thinking about him, and then I'm like, oh, he's dead. And it's, like, a yeah. weird feeling, right? And, like, like my brother struggles with that a lot more because, you know, again, he he lived with him way into adulthood, so he saw him every single day, and, and now well, he's see, in that that's same something house. I'm going through. Yeah, you know uh, what I'm saying? Because my dad came to live here with me. Uh, it's been four years, so he's never not been here. Yeah. You know, he just is here all the time right uh unless he you know runs to the store or something like that or a doctor's appointment but otherwise he's never stayed anywhere over like a weekend somewhere or overnight anywhere so every time i'm home he's here yeah so then the other day when i got up the floors weren't mopped and that was weird because my dad very um uh what, what do you call it like an ocd type of deal yeah Always doing the floors, always cleaning mm-hmm. in the bathrooms and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and I get up and I'm like, oh, man, these floors look like they're a mess. You know, or yeah. they just haven't been done. Or um, my dad loves doing the lawn and the lawn hasn't been mowed. Right. And so it's like, uh, yeah, I'm going to get out there and do that. But it's almost like I almost feel like I'm uh, turning my back on him or something. If I do the lawn, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's his thing. He it's likes to do. Yeah. Oh, uh, I feel the same way with my brother, Zach, except for, you know, I'm just lazy. Like, Oh he, yeah, he does the lawn. I can't possibly do the lawn ever or the dishes or, right. or sweep the floor. Yeah. I just, that's not the, the things I do. Um, but you know, I, I obviously, I think we're all wishing the best for your dad. And, uh, I, I, I think everything will go well Friday and, uh, you know, Hopefully he'll be as good as new with that open heart well, surgery. Best doctors in the world are in uh, Cleveland Clinic. So. That's very true. That's very true. Um, there is some wrestling stuff to talk about, but I feel like there's a lot of personal stuff to talk about this week too. Obviously, your dad um, in, in the news. Um, did you hear something about a former president almost getting assassinated? Do you want to talk politics on the show? How you feel about yeah. that situation? How I feel about that? Or do you want to just move on? I don't know, man. I, I kind of would like to talk about it, but i know how weird that is but yeah it's gonna be weird i'll just say it uh i'm sure because it's been all over online and stuff like that but my first thing was and whether you feel a certain way about uh president trump or not uh, uh, however you feel uh, my first thing was what a work well yeah yeah i i, I was ta- I, so he uh, found that hard cam right away sure made did. that Fist five pump. second pose Dude. In, in a with a fist bump. So I heard about it from best friend Mike from Patreon. He randomly texted me. I was getting in a quick workout in my gym, and uh, he goes, "Someone just tried to assassinate Donald Trump." So I was like, "What? What?" And I'm like, I immediately go to the internet and I see the clips and everything. And the first thing I see is the picture, blood trickling down, yep. fist pumped, yep. and I'm like, "God." 
damn it. That's this is the iconic picture. Yep. As soon as I saw he it, he never I knew. has to even campaign now. Yeah, I, if I was him, I wouldn't even say another word. Yeah. Um. So I, I see this. I see the video, and my first, I, I, I call Hannah because I don't know if she knows. She likes politics, and uh, I, I, I said I, ha- I, I, everything in me tells me to immediately go to social media and make a joke about blading. Um, because he's a WWE Hall of Famer and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, but I don't want people to think that I think it's like a hoax or something. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to give my uh, thorough thoughts on this thing, but, like, it sucks that he can't even, like, say anything in jest. The man is uh, okay from what we understand and everything. But um, I did post a meme to the Iron On Wrestling page. Did you see that by chance? No, I don't Over the so. situation. So I was like, not my comment, but it was a joking comment. It's a... It's a meme of uh, Stone Cold from the Stone Cold podcast, as you can see in this photo here. And uh, oh yeah, I did. Yeah, see that yeah. Then. So so the caption, if you guys didn't see it on the Iron and Wrestling social media, it says, "So there you are, WWE Hall of Famer on the campaign trail, running for president of the United States. You hear the shots, I hear the pops. World sees you take a dive. Next thing you know, you got color. World wants to know, goddamn kid." You're working or shooting. So I was like, yeah, I'll post this. But then, of course, like, not on the Instagram one, but on Facebook, people are like, oh, it did look like he, you know, might have cut himself. And, oh, it's clearly set up. I was like, Jesus Christ. Like, I, I don't, uh, just You're always going to have conspiracy theories. Yeah. and But, I mean, you know, there's, there's something to be said for that because uh, as a young kid, right, that shot him. But he was, you know, two minutes before he shot him, people were saying, hey, there's a guy on the building with a gun. I did see that as well. And and when they revealed the, the pictures of the kid that uh, shot him, who was 20 years old, I was like, yeah, that looks like someone who would uh, <laughs> get a gun and shoot at someone, you know. But maybe he was coerced. He might have been. Yeah. I don't know. He, he had the big Jeffrey Dahmer glasses and uh, the unkempt hair and uh, all that good stuff. So I, I don't know, man. Um, hey, also... And I was telling you this. I just saw this episode of The Boys, and you haven't gotten there yet. But you know, there's a a scene that's very reminiscent of this. Okay, this, so, so so you've been bugging me for four years now to watch <laughs> The Boys, and I finally am on the train, and I watched uh, not the A train, not a yeah, fan of careful. him, but uh, watched the whole first season. I finished it today, and uh, I'm hooked, man. It it's uh. Once I once I got it watching the first couple episodes, I was like, oh, okay. Um, superheroes that are kind of corrupt, um, like any other person. Uh, it's a lot of PR. It's a lot of glitz and glamour more than actually being a real hero. Um, once I understood that, I was like, this is this is genius. And I, I wish I would have jumped on board sooner. But I'm glad that there's four seasons now because much like when I finally was like, ah, oh, let me try Breaking Bad, I could I watched it through the course of like two months straight, you yeah. know, every episode and, and, and still probably the best show I've ever watched in my entire life. But, um, the only thing I have with the boys is that, um, it gets gross. It does get very graphic, but you're I'm not even there yet though. Well, you're not even what I'm seeing right now. There's been times I've shut it off. Well, yeah, it, it the, if it's if it's worse than what I'm seeing in season one, then uh, I'm all on board. Uh, as long as it's not real life, or if they're like mocking. The one thing that always gets me, and I don't know if I've talked about it on the show, is like it's like seeing surgeries, like wh- not the actual surgery, which I'm sure I'd be bothered by as well. But like when they're like anytime WWE for some reason is allowed to show like, yeah. oh, here's like the footage inside someone's fucking body. Like when I, Triple H is getting dude, repaired. Dude, yeah. I, I want to like vomit. I don't want to see that. Like, how are you allowed to show footage of that on TV? Like you can't show a guy bleeding, yeah. but you can fucking show the inside with the blood vessels and like, it's just fucking disgusting. I don't want to see that. Um, but I but I do like the boys. Uh, um, I now I, I I heard that about you. I shut up. I'm in a, I'm in a, a rock and a hard place here because <laughs> I heard Thursday that about you. <laughs> Thursday Cobra Kai is back up. So yeah. I got to go through those five episodes. I want to keep watching the boys. I want to get up to speed as quickly as possible. There's a lot of documentaries I have to watch, and at the same time, I want to be more creative, creatively fulfilling for myself because I just feel like I haven't been. Uh, Living up to my potential. And I got to do a Zoom chat sometime soon before the end of the month. I got wrestling shows coming up. I got to be in Illyria 
uh, in the afternoon on Saturday. I got to be in Chicago that night. I got to be in Detroit next weekend. I got another show in Illyria this Sunday. I am I'm a busy beaver. Yeah. Yeah, you are. <sighs> It's rough, man. It's um, rough being you. But if you if you guys have not watched the boys, you should. It's it's again between the boys and Cobra Kai, especially when WWE sucked uh, before two years ago. It's better pro wrestling than pro wrestling. Yep. It's better pro wrestling than AEW. That's for sure. Well, that's debatable. Is it? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> um, we do have to talk about some wrestling stuff, obviously. Um, well, you want to talk about deaths too? We yeah, we we can let let's talk about a little bit of wrestling. We can come back to the deaths for a second. Okay. Since we mentioned AEW, uh, did you see this tweet? Uh, or it wasn't a tweet it's from an interview with Tony Khan about Edge. No, have you seen this at all? All right. Um, well, yeah, I promise you guys, we'll be bouncing all around wrestling, non wrestling stuff today. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. If you are enjoying the show, make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube or whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on and leave us a review. Leave us some comments in the comments section. It all helps create visibility for the podcast. Maybe even uh, share a graphic of the episode up on social media. That helps too. But um, in a recent interview with Sports Grid, uh, Tony Khan had this to say about Adam Copeland in AEW. <clears throat> He was the TNT champion, the face of our other network. He arguably has been on the greatest run of his entire legendary career, which is really saying something because he's had so many great matches, so many great runs. What he's been doing in AEW is some of the best stuff. I'm really proud of that. He was on this amazing run. Unfortunately, he got injured and he had to vacate the title, but we've had so many great free agents come in just in the past year. So... When you think of great runs of Edge, I'm thinking Edge and Lee Moriarty. Uh-huh. And then I'm also thinking Edge and The Undertaker. And I would have to say this run that Edge has been on and he's wrestled Lee Moriarty, I think that ranks a little bit above those feud with The Undertaker. Okay. So so let me say something real quick since you brought up Lee. Uh I see him get a lot of hate on social media when like um Fans and maybe podcasters sometimes will be like, why the fuck was CM Punk wrestling Lee Moriarty? Why the fuck was Edge wrestling Lee Mor- Moriarty? Here's the thing. Lee is actually very talented, and I am glad that he's gotten those opportunities because I think he's grossly underrated. The problem is, though, if Tony Khan wanted to logically book Lee with guys like Edge and CM Punk, he would have to try to elevate him as such, and I think that's where the hatred comes in. Uh, that being said, I... Yeah, it's nothing against Lee Moriarty, and the yeah. only reason I use him as an example is because, like you said, you see that people criticize Lee Moriarty. Yeah. I remember watching him on the indies. I remember him working you, and yeah. I remember him being great. One uh, of my favorite matches. I, he, he said it on this podcast when he was on that I was the first guy to pull him aside and say, get out of Pittsburgh. Because, yeah. like, I, I immediately knew. And, like, th- there's so many parallels with Lee to Gargano. And I think that's saying something. You say that to Jim Cornette, he might, he might question Lee Moriarty. But uh, I, I think he's incredibly talented. And I'm glad that he's gotten the opportunities that he's gotten. But I, think, I feel like he deserves more opportunities. Maybe, maybe there needs to be something more in the character department no, for No, that's Lee. all I need is a story for him. Yeah. Yeah, because his matches hold up. Yes. Any match you ever watch is a good match. I'm sure his match with Edge, whenever it was, or Adam Copeland, I'm sure it was fine. I don't even know if they wrestled each other. To be honest, they I did. just am going on what I uh, what I read online. Well, here here's my thing. I would like um, his run, that being Adam Copeland's run in AEW. I don't necessarily think it's been anything to write home about. Like I was really excited of the prospect of seeing him and Christian one more time because, you know, um, when he first came back to WWE. In 2020, that was cool, but I think people forget and gloss over the following year because it was in the pandemic. One of the few bright spots during the pandemic was the 2021 Royal Rumble, specifically when they had that spot in the match where not only did we have Edge, but we had the surprise Christian return. And you have this moment in the ring where they face off with each other and like almost like this brotherly, like, this is surreal. Here we are both in a WWE ring competing again after you know edge was on the shelf for like nine years christian was on the shelf because of concussions for like six or seven years and i felt like it was this organic like um 
iconic moment in some ways that I feel like they could have capitalized on, but they didn't. They dropped the ball with Christian there. They only did one thing with him afterwards where Randy Orton, they hyped a Randy Orton-Christian match uh, that never came to frustration in the main event segment of Raw. Uh, the ratings spiked on that episode of Raw because people thought Christian was actually going to wrestle, and he, they did not. They did an angle where he just got punt kicked. And uh, so the prospect of these guys both being in the same place in AEW and doing a, a top program was really cool. And while some of the stuff with them has been enjoyable, I think overall, you know, I don't even know if like you could you could talk about their feud more than you would talk about. Oh, it's cool to see Adam Copeland show up in AEW, and it, and Christian's been on this great run with you know making all the dad references and all that stuff. But like them together in AEW, I, nothing that they've really done is stand out to me. Yeah, I I do want to say this about Christian. He brought in. Uh, Nick Wayne as his son now. Yeah. So, I I think he should change his name to Nick Cage. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? That, that's another one. I, I, I like Nick, too. He's a good kid. And um, they're trying a little bit with him, but, like, I sometimes I just feel like they don't try enough, man. Like, like Here's another thing. Adam Copeland had this huge feud where he broke his leg in a cage match against Malachi Black or Alistair yeah. Black? Well, well, hold on. That's a, that's another thing. They didn't even. Whatever happened to that guy? Malachi Black? Yeah. Is he still there? I don't. I, know. I don't. Al- see- also, that was one of his only singles matches that he's had in his entire run in the promotion for like the last three years. Like literally, I don't think he's had more than five singles matches. You guys can look it up and and fact check me on that one. But I'm pretty positive. Like it's mostly been trios for some odd reason. Even though like he had so much so much. Uh, Hype behind him in WWE, had that great NXT run, of course, when he got called up to the main roster, it was him and Ricochet, and that was kind of weird. Um, but um, dude, they didn't even build up to the Malachi Black thing perfectly. There was more... Edge would still be wrestling right now if they didn't do a fucking cage match first. Yeah. This is literally their first singles match, and they just went to, you know what, barbed wire, steel cage. Why? Like, why? I, I don't understand. What do you think would have... Say... Adam would not have broken his leg in that match, and the feud continues. What What's the next match? Um, does it have to be? That, is it electro electrocuting? Well, you no. Know, I, I, I I I feel like Tony would just have booked like a sing a standard singles match. Okay. Um, and do something where like uh, no one's allowed at ringside. You know what I mean? Kind of yeah, like he does yeah. for the uh, what's the the mid card in championship inter- international. Yeah, whatever. Or whatever. the continental. Yeah, whatever. Like you're not or allowed to TBS interfere in this or the match. Doesn't even triple, make it. Triple crown. Maybe that's it. It's. I don't even know if it's. I. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. R O H. All I know is like if I had to pick Edge's best run. In the WWE or in wrestling, yeah. I I wouldn't pick the AEW run. Not even close. No, uh, I can think of several WWE runs that were much better. Like uh, you know, probably uh, you know we started coming to prominence in 2005, 2006. You know, when he became the rated R superstar, he did the Money in the Bank cash in that was incredible. Uh, when he came back in 2010 and d- was doing the stuff with Jericho, um, that was fun. Um, his uh, his comeback in 2020, um, not everybody's cup of tea, but I enjoyed some of the stuff with Randy. I think maybe the WrestleMania match was a little bit too long, but it, we're in a different era. It was Man, cinematic. I did not like that it match. Was, it was probably, I think it was the second longest match in WrestleMania history, actually, behind the Iron Man match. <laughs> I think it was like 45 minutes or something. Um, but uh, I, I did like their the um, the greatest match ever thing that they did that was i think that was much better than the wrestlemania match probably shouldn't have called the greatest match ever i thought that was the wrestlemania no they did they did a crazy like anything goes match at wrestlemania and then they did have a truck they did okay that that, wasn't the greatest match ever. no so then they did a cinematic style match in the ring at backlash in the next month you remember like because because here's what stands out to me from the match other than um the in-ring stuff being better than most stuff because these two guys are kind of old school and they want to tell stories. What almost took me out of the match was um, they did a camera shot below them while they were in the ring and they like went to lock up. And I was like, what are they doing right now? And also, that's why Edge got hurt in that match because 
he was doing the spot where he was jumping to take the RKO. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I think I could do that better. And it was yeah. in a retake for it the match. Good, yes. He got hurt. So it's like, you know, what the fuck, man? So, uh, yeah, his run with <laughs> Christian as a tag team in the in the 2000s, I would say, is much better than his AEW run. He was playing kazoos back then. They had a five-second pose. I mean, give me they a fucking brought break. in Kurt Angle? Yes, yes. It, so um, I, I, I don't even know where I would place his AEW run, but it would be close to the bottom. So I can't think of anything worse um, for him. What, uh, what, what, anything you want to add to that about Edge? Oh, Adam Copeland. Uh, but uh, you're a much bigger Edge fan than I am. I love Edge, and Edge yeah. loves me. We're fans of each other, okay? He DM'd me once and told me that. Yeah, that's nice of him. Yeah. So, and I, and I have his, uh, his pop, his pure plank. Uh huh. I haven't even talked about that. I think I worked that. on shows with him. You might have. Yeah. Sexton Hardcastle yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Uh, him and Christian against, uh, Punk and, um, Colt Cabana. That sounds about right. In Probably Detroit. like 97, 98 era. Yeah. Or maybe a little later, 99. 99. No, right well. Before WWF, right before he went. So it would have been like like the beginning of beginning of 98, maybe the yeah. uh, end of 97. I think it was like my first road trip, and I remember, um, well, I definitely remember Punk because of the Pepsi tattoo. Mm-hmm. I remember we were getting changed next to each other, and I was like, what's this fucking Mark? <laughs> He got a Pepsi tattoo. Mark for Pepsi, brother. Yeah, and then he was probably looking at me and going, "This is fucking Mark. You got a fucking Arn Anderson logo tattoo." Well, up. you didn't have that yet, but you no, had plenty of had tattoos that ones. he could have made fun of for sure, like motherfucker with a Star Wars tattoo and a fucking loser. <laughs> yeah. um, what? Uh, so uh, also, uh, I listened to a uh, podcast with Cody Rhodes today. A uh, couple. Chris actually. Van Fleet. I listened to the Chris Van Fleet one, and he was doing one with DDP that I was listening to. Oh today. yeah, I saw that. And uh, before I talk about the Van Fleet thing, because uh, this one's not getting a lot of traction, but it, it stands out with me because I'm a wrestler. Um, he had this comment to say while talking to Diamond Dallas Page, and I was like, you know what? I've been wanting to say it like this, but I didn't know how to verbalize it. And I was like, I feel good knowing that me and Cody Rhodes kind of think the same. Hold on, let me pull this up for you here. You said pull this up. Yeah, it's a video. Okay. Once you even have that, right? How, then it becomes how do you keep it? What do you know? And, you know, and then the, you find like less is more, but less is more is something that lazy guys use. They abuse it. That term is, I feel like, really only, I feel like it's, that term is for people who understand what less is more mean. Meaning like get... Get, get the most out of the smallest of steps versus you hear a bunch of guys who say less is more today and you can, I can just tell, like, eh, I feel like it's because you're incapable of more. Anyway, <laughs> like, you know, but... Uh. Yep, so, so yeah, um, that stood out to me with the Diddy Peter because there was a lot of stuff that was rehashed, mainly centered around him finally finishing story and they just dropped it this week. But uh, we've talked about it before on this podcast there's nothing I hate more than a guy who, when I go to him and say, like, what do you want to do tonight? He's like, brother, I don't do anything. I, I do, I do, I do a suplex. I do a dropkick. But it's like, it's always a motherfucker who just can't do things. Yeah. And you're just being a fucking lazy bitch. Uh-huh. I hate it. I can't stand it. And, like, there is importance to less is more. You know, uh, as much as Hogan lies on podcasts, one of the things that has stood out from him on a podcast last week, he was talking to, uh, I think he was on some Christian podcast or something, but he, he had Christian has a podcast? No, a, a, like a, a religious podcast. Uh-huh. I forget what it was. But um, they started talking about AEW and he started talking about Edge. And he's like, I haven't talked to him, but I want to ask him, like, why'd you jump off that cage, man? Like, <laughs> like, like, spots like that are for guys that aren't over, and Edge yeah. is pretty over. Like, why'd you jump off the, like, what What do you have to prove, you know? Like, it wasn't that exact verbiage, but it was something like that. And, um, you know, like, wrestling, at its heart, it's storytelling, right? And But sometimes, you know, you could bust out some stuff, but if you can get something out of a look to the crowd or little nuanced things. I was just watching something interesting, um, I went and watched the whole match myself after I heard about it on Undertaker's podcast. Um, a match I'd never seen between Brett and Undertaker from 92. And this is back when Undertaker is doing the sit-up gimmick, right? So he's like Mike Myers, Jason, undead at its peak, right? Yeah. And the whole match, like, 
Brett keeps doing shit, bumping Undertaker down, whatever. He does a sit-up, and he does a sit-up, and he does a sit-up. And there's this moment in the match where Brett finally gets him down. Boom, he's not sitting up. Brett goes up to the fucking turnbuckle to do the uh, second rope elbow yeah. as he's sitting up there. Undertaker sits up, and Brett's on the turnbuckle, and he just kind of puts his head down like, damn it. And then tries to go for the elbow, and, like, Taker gets up. You know what I mean? So it was like, yeah. it was like this little, these little subtle things in the storytelling. It's almost like, you know, you think you've fucking got Jason finally, and all of a sudden he fucking pulls the fucking knife out of his chest, and he's still coming for you. It's like, gee, what do I got to do to this guy, right? And it's like, that's... Wrestling is storytelling, and guys who, like, just don't want to do shit... Uh, there's there's nothing worse. There's nothing more creatively stifling than someone who's just like, well, I'm just, all I do is this. Like, can you fucking give me something, please? Hey, about Undertaker, you told me to watch an uh, episode with Midian. Did you watch so it? So I watched the first half of it so far. Okay. And it's great. Dude, you're right. Incredible. I, I pick and choose my Undertaker podcast, mm-hmm. but there was, I, I just wanted to see, like, maybe they're going to talk about Naked Minion, mm-hmm. um, just because that's the most random part of his career. I'm like, who fucking came up with that? They didn't really even talk about Naked Minion, yeah. but he just seems like a dude that I just want to sit with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, definitely more of a partier than me, but for some reason, I feel like we would get along. For sure. And he doesn't hold anything back. He's I not, love his story about uh, Viscera. He's Which like, story was he's that? He's like, uh, what, I told Taker, you want to bring in Viscera to the oh, Ministry of Darkness? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Undertaker said, yeah, because I'd rather have him on our team yeah, than have to work. Right. Well, 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 my favorite thing was like the idea, which you don't think about it because like of how how old he looks and the fact that he's hanging with Taker. Not that the Taker's like super old. He's like 58. But um, Midian once asked out Stephanie McMahon. Did you see that part of the no. podcast? He he like apparently Undertaker didn't know. He's like, you asked Stephanie out once, and basically the story was, you know, I I I walked up to her and I think catering one day, and uh, you know she was on the loop, and uh, she was just started to do stuff on TV, and I think we had like an off day before another show, and I said, hey, what, what how would you like to you know maybe get some food and like go see a movie in the afternoon tomorrow? And she <laughs> she said to me. Uh, you know, I would, but my dad said I'm not a lot of date wrestlers, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so, like, I just, but I was like, "But I guess he's only like a couple years older than her." So it's like, wow, that seems weird that, yeah. that like Midian would be like, "Hey, that's so random." But yeah, but funny he that he would share like, that story. Uh, th- that would be the guy that would do that. Yeah, thing. and he like doesn't give a shit, right? Like yeah. he's not afraid to get made fun of yeah, for it or whatever. Like it. Yeah, 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 it's not a hot girl. So and, what? And and like he had no problem. Like again, like he's not looking for a job. Job, which makes for the best interview so he's like not pulling any punches he's like you know like uh i try to apply for creative and like road dog was like how would you like to be a writer for nxt and i was like yeah sure and so like i wrote out all these storylines and blah 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 and you know half the time when i write storylines and he kind of looks at taker and he goes uh, you know sometimes my ideas i've been told are better than the ones that creative are given but um then you know uh by the time i submitted everything road dog was like ah oh, that spot's already been taken i was like fuck man god damn it you know what i mean so it's yeah. like you know like he doesn't care he just like he just says stuff. So if you didn't want to listen to the Midian Undertaker interview, take some time to do that because it was fun stuff. So then that leads to today. I'm at the hospital. Me and the boys are sitting there with my dad, and we're talking about YouTube and how uh, just YouTube is is great. I love yeah. YouTube. And my dad says, "Hey, you know who my favorite dude is to listen to on YouTube?" And I'm like, "Who?" My dad's not a big wrestling fan. But he goes, I love Undertaker. <laughs> he goes, I love the stories, man. Yeah. The stories of just being out there and on the road. He goes, and you know this motherfucker, Hulk Hogan? He said that Undertaker broke his neck. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, me and Greg yeah. covered that on like episode two or yep. something of yep. uh, The Lie of the Week. Yep. <clears throat> He's like, oh, man. He goes, and then I went and watched it, and it's good six inches of not hitting his head. And, yep. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, and it just it really surprised me, but. Undertaker uh, is a is a great storyteller too. Um, I'm glad that we're getting this version of the Undertaker now, for sure. Because at first, when he came out and uh, he was like a preacher when he came up, or maybe that was his Hall of Fame. Yeah, he, well, it was, it was more like, was like, like oh like, no, go back to not talking. It, it was like it was like motivational speaker Undertaker, but like like the most like he's like so happy go lucky. I don't know, like 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 not like just just total opposite of what you've seen for 30 years to where I was like, I don't know about this, but, uh, but I will say his one dead man show, 
uh, was was really enjoyable when it, in November. I actually got an invite from uh, Austin from Acupuncture to go against SummerSlam weekend, so I don't think I'm doing anything. So I think I'll be accompanying Austin to the afternoon uh, matinee Undertaker One Dead Man show. Hopefully he makes it different than the last time around. I think he tries to make it different in every city. Wow. Um, so uh, that should be a good time. But um, yeah, could we go back to Cody Rhodes real quick? Yeah. Um, no, we got off on a tangent there, but. Uh, he also made a comment on the Chris Van Vliet podcast that I found interesting uh, about leaving AEW. Would you like to hear it? No, but go ahead and tell me anyway. I think you would. It's, this is probably the closest right now to we're going to get to uh, how everything ended. The exact quote from uh, Cody on Chris Van Vliet's podcast is, uh, how AEW ended was terrible, really, and people are going to write books later on. And these stories are going to get out there, and then it's going to be a whole new ball game. Um, I'm not comparing myself to Batman, but there's a piece of that that's really important to certain fans from AEW fandom. They need the story to be that they didn't want me, they didn't push me. They need he was bad. They need that story. They need me to be the villain. I was always fine with accepting that because of the respect I have for AEW in the first place, how difficult it was to do the original All In, how unbelievable the feeling was to do Double or Nothing, how fortunate we were that Tony wanted to invest in this vision, and he had a vision as well. Regardless of our petty squabbles, I will always have a love for it. I got to wrestle Brody Lee in his final match. I got to lead people, young people behind the scenes. I will always have a love for it. Um, So I find that interesting that he did say that it was... There was negative reasons for which he left. He didn't expand upon that, but he he said that there there'll be books written about it one day, and I believe there'll probably be a documentary about it one day. Um, what are your thoughts on Cody, in a very um, nice way, saying that the things in AEW didn't end on the best scenarios? Do what do you what do you imagine it was over? Uh, everybody always says it's, uh, the two C's: the cash and the creative. Yeah. So my guess would be. One, if not both of those. I'm I'm probably going to guess uh, creative. Yeah. I'm going to guess creative. Because yeah. uh, I got to imagine. Well, I thought you said he said something in there about money. Did he say something about money? Yeah, but, um, you know, Cody seems like a guy who could really sink his teeth into something. He went to acting school, you know. He's got that in his blood from his dad. Um, <clears throat> I bet he needed to be fulfilled creatively. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and and, and look, um, listen, I, I know it's getting to sound like we're burying AEW every week on the show, but there's like a lot of stuff that could easily be improved if Tony Khan just accepted some help. I mean, I think that's what it comes down to. Uh, you can't do everything by yourself. And uh, some of the creative ideas and things that we've been seeing on TV makes no sense. Like, I don't even, um, I can't even remember what happened now. I didn't watch it, but I heard about it. I think Eric from Patreon was mentioning it because he wanted us to talk about it this week. Eric. They uh, they did a something on Collision this week where apparently um, the Bang Bang Gang. Oh, yeah. They got stripped of the trios championship. Because, I watched because the two Because the members that they wanted to defend the belts weren't the members that won the belts. So yeah. Christopher Daniels stripped them, and then... Um, immediately booked a match with the version that they wanted to defend the belts with um, against um, the acclaimed. So the they couldn't just keep the belts and do the Freebird w- rule. They had to, st- Christopher Daniels had to strip them and then immediately make a match. And then they, they lost that match. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, it, oh, that that's it. Yeah. Because uh, 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 I didn't understand. Why? Yeah. Why do that? Why? No freaking idea, like, man. B- but, like, wasn't there, like, a wasn't there a story not too long ago where, like, Samoa Joe helped MJF defend the tag titles when Adam Cole was hurt? Yeah. Okay. But Christopher Daniels wasn't in charge then. Oh, okay. Well, Christopher, Christopher Daniels, Daniels gets Daniels all his isn't information. isn't really even in charge now because a lot of times he'll make a ruling and then somebody will say, well, I'm going to go talk to Tony Khan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, even though Tony Khan is giving direct orders to Christopher Daniel. Like, that's his purpose on the on the show. Yeah, but Tony Khan is also giving direct orders to Tony Schiavone. Also correct. Yeah. So, again... So, Schiavone is... I, I, I don't know, man. It, it's almost like there's too much going on. I can't keep track of it. I mean, wouldn't it... Uh, it would be nice to have, like, someone who, like... 
works in like a continuity department, you know? See, I thought that's what Will Washington was supposed to be there for. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about that guy. Wasn't that like a Meltzer recommendation? I'm not sure on that. Okay. I just know that I watched him on on a podcast. And <clears throat> then Will moved on, and uh, and I thought that was his job, was to ensure that the little details uh, were, were consistent. Well, I'll say this, yes. okay? Um, I know a couple of the writers that are at AEW, and... Um, not that I've talked to any of them directly, but I'll say this, for example. I know Jimmy Jacobs is one of the writers there. And he's, in my mind, a creative genius. So I can't imagine what we're seeing on TV is Jimmy's fault. Because I bet you Jimmy's trying. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's it, it begins and ends at the top. Much like it did when Vince was in power. And Vince was only putting stuff on TV for himself. I think what it comes down to, in a much different way, in a more wrestling-centric way, um, Tony Khan is putting things on TV for himself, despite what he may be uh, having pitched to him as good, logical ideas. So, I guess that's what I'll say on that. Um, Uh, But, you know, here's another... The opposite end of that is... I loved uh, Tony Storm and Mariah May's story. Yeah. Although... You could argue that there were many holes in that because uh, Tony Storm flip flop from baby and heel. Well, yeah, and and she she never really had an official baby face turn. It's just like mm-hmm. her character is so entertaining that she's become a baby face. And also, we haven't got an explanation from Mariah May yet why exactly she turned right. I mean, like it was a, it was a hot angle. It, it it's uh, left you asking why at the end of the program. But like, I don't know if there's anything. Um, concrete that we can point to, unless well, she they need to it lead out. off. They need to lead off Wednesday's show with Mariah May. Well, I think isn't uh, coincidentally their show on uh, Wednesday like their 250th episode or something. Oh yeah. What yeah. are the odds of that? How how did that even out? I don't know. 250 episodes of this and 250 and episodes yeah. of that. Uh, that's weird. We're like the same. Huh. Well, I don't know if I want to say that, but. Um, why don't uh, we take a little break? Because we're already recording longer than we planned on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little snack. We'll do some commercials and uh, we'll come back with some more uh, wrestling content. What do you say? All right, I'll miss you until then. You know I don't want to brag or anything, but well then don't. Uh, well, I, I'm not brag. I'm just stating a a factual thing that occurred, even though only I know it. Uh, yesterday mm-hmm. at the gym. Mm. Uh, Maurice walked up to me, and he says, he says to me... Uh, Wait, Mrs. Wife? No, no, Maurice, a man. Okay. Not Maurice, Maurice, M-A-U-R-I-C-E. And he walks up to me, and, uh, you know, I had my shirt off, and he goes, uh, Hey, man, you, you, you starting to look in shape. And I want to be like, hey, Maurice, go fuck yourself, because he, yeah. he had said that to me before in the gym. And he's just like, I said that to you last time you were here. I don't know if you remember it. And I was like, yep, I remember it. I'm thinking to myself, you know, if you weren't fucking uh, a 245-pound man, I would beat the fuck out of you right now, you fucking piece of shit. Uh, but uh, what he didn't know, uh-huh. you know, I not only am <clears throat> looking good on a regular basis, not starting to look good, but I... <laughs> did an incline bench press at the gym without a spotter. Didn't need Maurice's bitch ass. Did it 145 one time, okay? Pretty difficult task for a man with one functioning hand, Hmm. okay? And I'd like to think that I only did that because I've been using my TNT Health creatine on a regular basis, and it's increasing my gains. Well, the creatine is wonderful, but what about the glutamine? Well, I, uh, I, of course, use that for my post-workout, so I don't have the soreness that comes with uh, regular, hardcore diet and exercise. And that helps with the recovery? It does. It does. No muscle soreness for me. What about you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah? Yes. Uh, I added another six inches onto my arms. So as you look at them now, they are 27-inch pythons bigger three inches bigger than hulk hogan at his peak it's very interesting <laughs> that's not the only thing three inches bigger than hulk hogan's okay so and that's all thanks to our good friend mike yeah over at uh tnt health yes 
tnt-health.com has all the supplements you need. If you're starting your fitness journey, if you're already on your fitness journey, Mike is going to keep you on the straight and narrow. But you know what? Sometimes if you're off the path a little bit, Mike and the good folks at tnt-health.com only want 78% results because sometimes you're going to screw up and that's okay. Mike is going to be with you every step of the way. He's always going to be checking in on you and he wants you get, to get you only on a couple supplements just so you know you get your foot in the door, you know what you're getting into so you're not overwhelmed with a big fitness bill every month. You don't need two, three, four hundred dollars worth of supplements like someone like a GNC will try to sell you on. Mike only wants you to get the stuff you need and you know what? Down the line, if you feel like you need something else, Mike and TNT-Health.com are the folks that you're going to want to go to. Well, you know, the latest thing I've been into, because I haven't been giving 100% or 90% or 80%, I was lowering down to about 70. Wait, what's under 70? 68-ish. A little bit more. 69? That's right. Okay. So uh, Mike had sent me over the glycolog. Which means that when I eat something, say, with a bunch of carbs in it, Mm -hmm. if I take uh, three of these capsules beforehand, uh, it kind of just, it's like having, it's like cheating on a cheat day. Is it a magic pill? It's not magic. Oh. But it could be. So, yeah, you take it, uh, it maximizes your insulin utilization. It increases your insulin sensitivity. Hmm. And yeah, if I if I threw in that extra cheat day, if I have some actual real bread instead of just sourdough, and, and when I say real bread, I I don't think like enriched white sandwich bread yeah. is real bread. Yeah, I don't think there's anything real about it. It's very processed. But if I take this stuff, I don't have to feel like shit. So uh, I take three of these ahead of time, and I recommend that anyone who is looking forward to having multiple cheat days in a row. Like if you're not able to stay consistent with your diet for the week because you're in and out of the hospital a lot, yeah, then, you know you could, you could do this. Yes, yeah, so well. Hey, hey, let me say this too. Okay, all right. What the fuck is up with every time I go to the hospital? You know what is uh, the food places that are around the hospital? Mm-hmm. Papa John's. Yeah. Peace, love, and little donuts. Yeah. Jersey Mike's. Mm-hmm. Jimmy John's. Everything yeah. filled with stuff that is going to. Send you right to the hospital next door. <laughs> yeah, well, the, you know, uh, if you ever notice all the Planet Fitnesses are structured the same way. Like, uh, there's a, a woman at my work who I will leave unnamed, who on a regular basis uh, tells me that she's she she's went to the gym yesterday, and uh, I've made the joke to others that I said, yeah, she went to the uh, gym parking lot and then pulled into the adjacent parking lot <laughs> at Taco Bell. Uh, and got some reps in there, <laughs> maybe some uh, quesadilla curls. Yeah. But uh, you know what? Even though she might be off her fitness journey like 90% of the time, you don't have to be because you can go to tnt-health.com. It's free to look, and uh, but we do recommend that you buy something. And you know what? You can save even more money if you use our promo code IRONON, I-R-O-N-O-N, and it'll save you 10% on anything and everything that you buy. So act now. Do it in the moment. Don't do it tomorrow. Because at tnt-health.com, it's about your health today, not tomorrow. Um, I just got a text from my girlfriend, Hannah. Oh, okay. okay. Because uh, <clears throat> you you sent me a screen cap of some Pokemon on the, oh, uh, the yeah. Pokemon Go. Is that what the kids are calling it? Pokemon Go, the game. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. and um, well, it was it was Go Fest this past weekend. Oh, okay. And so I I was doing a lot of uh, Pokemoning. Well, well, you sent a, a screen cap that you wanted me to send to her of a um, <clears throat> Necromza, Necroms, yeah, Crows, yeah. Crosma, Necrosma that you caught. Uh, uh-huh. Four hundred eighty pounds in weight. Yeah. Uh, has uh, Stardust. Ooh. Apparently. Um, Interesting, and now you sent me a screen cap to send her because she also plays Pokemon Go, so I guess she would care. Uh, a Moltres, yes, Galarian Moltres. Okay, and she and, well, she she replied, "Ooh, Galarian Moltres." Yeah, <laughs> very nice. Personally, I'd have used the banana since you're guaranteed a catch with that Pokeball. Your thoughts? 
Why would she have used a banana? I don't didn't know you the, could use a banana. Yeah, the banana is what calms the the pokey down. Okay, Hannah, if you're listening, I have a banana for you. <laughs> that will calm you down for I sure. I should have probably used a pineapple. I don't know what I used with it. I don't remember now. I might have just ended up using a golden razz. Aaron, yes. I have a pineapple for you that may or may not calm you down as well. Hey, what does pineapple mean? There's, It's it's something like uh, you're open to, um, it's a sexual thing. Let's look it up right now. I All feel right. like it has something to do with the, the vag. Uh, hold on. Nah, I think like if you wear pineapples on your shirt, that means like you and your wife are down to get down. Oh, is that it? The word pineapple is used when two people find that a moment has become awkward. No, that's not it. Uh, let's see. A form of group sex involving yeah. three or more people, at least <laughs> one being a male. Why are you rubbing your hands together <laughs> so much? Uh, you take a pineapple and cut off the top and then carve hole in the fruit about the size of your penis. Then shove the pineapple up the taker's asshole and put your penis in the hole in the pineapple. The third person sits under them and licks the <laughs> anal citrus blood blend that drips out of the taker's asshole. My apologies to anybody who went to my Instagram today <laughs> and saw that I'm a motivational speaker or maybe some old posts about the things that I've uh, done to help and inspire children, thinking, you know what, this guy has a podcast. Uh, I'd like to hear what he's talking about, the, the good messages that uh, he's putting out there. And then here I am talking about um, pineapple anal blood. So, it's Pokemon Go, baby. Yeah. Caught a bunch of shinies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Um, let's hey, how about that uh, post that you, you posted with uh, Katie and John Cena's gift and... Oh, Katie. People seem to kind of like that. Yeah, well, you know, I was surprised that I was getting so many likes on it because I posted it a few years ago when uh, I dressed as Kane and uh, Sarah Barker dressed as Katie Vick. She made those costumes for me. So shout out to the people still liking that post from years ago of uh, me and uh, Katie Vick. So that's cool. Well, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We have another post. Katie, who got the John Cena stuff. Is that yes. Okay. My, my apologies. Yeah. Uh, very nice little video. Yeah. Uh, I got emotional. I think a lot of the viewers over on the uh, social media accounts, uh, they too were very tearful and watching the video. Very cool thing. You know, one thing I have to point out, though, uh, we didn't credit John Thorne, but he facilitated a lot of that because he was the one that had KO's number. Oops. <laughs> My <laughs> I bad. was like... Reading it, and I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I probably should have. My apologies to John Thorne. Okay. He's never going <laughs> to let you backstage at AIW again. Wow. And uh, what was the other thing? Oh, um, the one thing that in the text message that Cena had sent me was, please never share this with anyone. Oh, okay. Well. And, you know, I figure that statue limitations passed by now. It's been 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So for the R first time in nearly years. 10 years, yeah, we finally put that out there. So I've been sitting on that one for a while. And uh, good video. I, I, I was happy to see that people were enjoying it and they get a chance to see uh, uh, John Cena. There's a lot of good things for people that we don't know about. And we do see the Make-A-Wish stuff all the time. but and a lot of the times we can't see the things that John Cena does <laughs> because he's Well, invisible. you can't see him. So, um you know, we said we were going to talk about some more wrestling th stuff, and uh, that mostly consists of some of your questions before we wrap up the show. But before we do so, um, we've talked about potential deaths and, uh, you know, my dead dad. And uh, there were a lot of deaths this past week in the celebrity world. Um, <clears throat> Brenda from 90210, uh, Shannon uh, Daughtry. And Doherty. Doherty. Do 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 Doherty. 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 Shannon Doherty. 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 Yeah. Hey, I loved her as Brenda. Yes. But maybe even better, uh, she was in Mallrats. So here's the thing. The second that I see she, she, she passed, I thought about her on 90210 and with uh, Dylan. And uh, I watched that a lot growing up because my mom was a big oh, fan of it. gosh. And, they're uh, both dead. They're both dead. Yep. And... Uh, but I did immediately think about her in Mallrats. And so, you know, I watched Mallrats for the first time in a long time 
uh, yesterday. And you know what? I still love mall rats. Yeah. But I got to say, I'm glad I watched it by myself and not with someone where I was like, oh, you got to watch mall rats if you've never watched it. Because TC and Brody, very unlikable men. Yeah. Like, like to the point where it's like, you know, I kind of don't want to see them get their girlfriends back. They really don't deserve it. Right, like they're, right. They're, they're big dickheads yeah. to the girls. Yeah. And, like, like what is uh, what was uh, uh, Shannon's name in, in Mallrats? I don't remember. Well, But I loved when Ethan Suplee comes up to her and well, he's like, yeah. Brenda? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, but I, 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 in the end, she only gets back with Brody because he's like, oh, well, what do you say I introduce you to my mom? Like, you were a fucking asshole to her. Like, you never let her meet her uh, your mom like you're more concerned about video games you're you kind of talk like a piece of shit to her in general but you're only slightly better than ben affleck's character and so like she just gets back with you hey you said it was a good size yes yes yeah like uh it was it was nice to relive it but not as good as i remember though i gotta be honest Made me kind of sad. I still like the uh, chocolate-covered pretzel bit, of course. Uh, Also, I don't think I've ever seen this extended version. The version Mm. that I watched had had like 35 X. Because when I started to watch it, it was like two hours and five minutes. I don't remember this movie being this fucking long. And uh, there's like a whole opening sequence that I never even saw before. That I was like, how do I not remember this? Like, it took 30 minutes to get to the mall. And I was like, what? And then I realized it was like an extended cut that came out on DVD after the initial release of the movie. So. I kept thinking when I had watched that version, I was like, did I always just come into the movie late? Yeah, yeah. And then I realized what was going on. I yep. had to uh, Google it. Right. Um, so that was pretty sad. But there was a lot of bad backstory there. You know, there was a lot of heat backstage. Uh, Shannon Doherty and Kevin she al- Smith. And- she was always the bad girl. Yeah, but yeah. like real, real life heat. You yeah, know, yeah. Those problems. Well, and, uh, she had those problems on nine hundred two one zero two. She ended up leaving Charmed for the same reasons because she had heat with Alyssa Milano. Oh, what, what you ever have heat with Alyssa Milano? And just when she was a fourteen year old girl in your basement. <sighs> Again, we've been through this. She is older than me. I had a crush on her when I was a kid. I have a Alyssa Milano workout photo. When she she's actually 16 in the photo, and it's a nostalgic thing. Okay, several people have told me that it's okay. All right, who, but we're not these people? we're not going to expand upon this. We're talking about serious stuff. Okay, we should call Johnny and see how he feels. We're about not going to call Johnny because Johnny started this shit. Okay, we talked about it on Patreon. You guys can check that out. patreoncom slash We're gonna get a buttload of bonus content starting at three bucks, including bonus episodes and the one where Johnny fucking disses me for having a Alyssa Milano poster. Anyways, um, she was very young. 53 years old, had cancer for a long time, and uh, apparently I'm kind of intrigued to go back and listen to it now since I think the end of last year she's been doing a podcast where she kind of like had, was sort of making peace with people and coming to grips with her own mortality and stuff, and uh, from all accounts it's a very interesting listen, and uh, yeah, maybe I'll have to go back in the archives and check some of that out. Cause well, it'd probably be good for you to listen to while you're working out and looking at that poster of Alyssa Milano. Okay, has nothing to do half with... Half naked. Carrying her lunch pail <clears throat> to school. She's not half naked or with a lunch pail. <laughs> um, Dr. Ruth passed away. Recently. Really? That I did not know. She passed away, yeah. Uh, yeah. She's gone, so, uh, you know, she's the original Hawk Tua girl, in my opinion. Uh real trailblazer when it comes to being open as an older woman talking about sex yeah, well, on the television. Yeah, she made a ton of money off of that, so, you know, I think you would be open. I think she was, like, 92. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, That's good. Who else passed away? Shelley yeah. Duvall passed away. Okay. Which, uh, of course, She's famous for movie. The Shining, but more famous, I think, for Suburban Commando. Am I right? I thought maybe Popeye. Hey. Suburban Commando. All right, I saw it once. You, you, no respect the for theater. No, no love for sh- The Shining, though. I never saw it. Really? Yeah. One of those out. movies where everybody's already seen it, yeah. so like I don't want to watch it because I want to watch a movie with someone. It's good. Yeah. You well, right. I feel like you could you should watch it with someone just because uh-huh. like it's 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 like a movie. I'll be scared. You want to no, you want to like 
you want to talk about what you're seeing because it's right. like a slow, methodical. Is the one with the two kids? Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. famous. Yeah. Um, uh, but she she has been in bad health for a long time. She huh. was kind of losing her mind, and uh, yeah. Just and then sad. what about what about Richard? So his birthday was uh, Saturday. Richard Simmons. And then he died uh-huh. also on Saturday. Oh. Yeah. Ironic. Yeah. Because, like, there were stories coming out that morning where it's like, oh, happy birthday, Richard Simmons. And then, like, the same website was like, oh, RIP, Richard Simmons. Like, it sucks. So, a uh, little bit of a kind of a story about Richard Simmons. Um, when I had gotten my wife uh, uh, pregnant, um, well, she wasn't my wife yet, and her grandfather was a pastor of a church and yeah this was forbidden and i had to go into these chambers and talk with the pastor about what i did and you know if this was a sin or something sure well, and he and he talked to you about how why, how he regretted not doing it first or <laughs> well that's discussion for another time okay yeah yeah, yeah. we've kind and of I'm alluded si- to uh the, the cultish vibe of this church that Aaron used to go to but continue so we're sitting in the chambers and we're, he goes uh well i understand you got my granddaughter pregnant and i said yes sir and he said okay well you know you're not married and but i'm willing to look past all that and he said uh Let's just move on from that, because I can tell what kind of a guy you are. You're you're a good guy, and I was just thinking, let's just move on to thinking of names for the baby. And it's a boy, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, <laughs> my name is Richard, and Richard's a strong name, yeah, strong yeah. name. Yeah. So, uh, how you feel about naming the boy Richard? Uh-huh. And I said, well, <laughs> sir. With all due respect, you do know my last name is Simmons. <laughs> and he said, yeah. And I said, so <laughs> then my child's name would be Richard Simmons. And he goes, yeah, strong, manly name. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, Richard Simmons, yep. like the least manly guy of all time. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. Um Still like the name, still strong name. Still okay. think you should name him after me. Yeah, I got you. Yep. Just comes out sweating to the oldies, that newborn. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you know, we talk about the uh, our fitness journeys often and health and wellness on this show. And, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, particularly for the women, you know, because uh, before Z- uh, uh, Zumba was a thing, you know, a lot of people just got VHS tapes and, and – started their fitness journey with Richard Simmons. And so, you know, very flamboyant personality. And there's been a lot of talk in recent years about perhaps maybe a a movie based on his life being done. I know there was a little bit of a dispute with uh, Pauly Shore over it uh, before his death where... Pauly Shore died? No, no. Before before Richard Simmons' death, Pauly Shore and him were going back and forth because Richard Simmons did not want Pauly Shore playing him in a movie despite the fact that Pauly Shore looks... Pretty much identical. I was just thinking, there's nobody else I'd rather yeah. see. So, so, and it, it was not even a joke. There was a post where uh, Richard Simmons said that if he had a movie made about his life, he would not want Pauly Shore playing him. He would want someone like Tom Cruise. <laughs> and when I read this to Hannah, she said, well, it makes sense. Pauly Shore is a fucking joke. And I was like, Hannah, Tom Cruise to play Richard Simmons. And Richard Simmons was a joke. He's you know not I mean? a joke. He was a joke. He's not a Everybody joke. Everybody laughed at Richard Keep Simmons. Smiling. He, made, he made Keep so shining. much money off of being a joke. No, no. He's a good man. I have his autograph to Jacob in my it, gym. All right. Where, where is that autograph? picture located is it next to Alyssa milano's naked photos it's next to a wbf advertisement from uh, uh one of the final shows with uh one of the i forget which bodybuilder but uh he's doing a face oh, gary. off with uh no, gary stride uh what was that his name it might be gary but he's yeah. doing like a face off with uh uh lou ferrigno because lou ferrigno was a part of the short-lived wbf as well but uh r.i.p to all those celebrities and uh you know, it's sad. It, it happens in threes, but it happened in four this time. Yep. Dr. Ruth. Yeah. God damn it, dude. 
hate it. You want to do some right. questions? We got to do up? these questions. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got uh, from Patreon first, of course, but also from social media. What we have time for? Um, let's see. Eric from Patreon says, "Why do you keep denying you met my dogs?" I don't think I did. Maybe they were in the car one day. I don't feel like I met your with dogs. the windows rolled up. I, That's how Eric does. Eric. His... Eric. Is a Eric. Sick He's a sick man. Uh, I don't remember where I would have met them, um, but uh, yeah, Justin Bonner. Maybe he meant. Quit denying that you uh, have him at my dong. Okay. Justin Bonifield from Patreon says, For Greg and Aaron, last comedian you saw live and your favorite comedian. Well, I'm pretty positive. Um, one of the only professional comic shows that I've seen, and I think it was the last one, Norm MacDonald. I got tickets oh, from... Yeah, you invited me to that. Yeah, I didn't go, yeah, and I love Norm MacDonald. You couldn't go, and I... Uh, unfortunately, I took Ricky Shane Page. And, uh, yeah, I had to go experience Norm MacDonald with him. But, um, and I, you know what? I was just watching, like, two or three documentaries about him over the last week. Norm might be my favorite comedian of all time, just because, uh, as I've talked about on the show before, subconsciously for a long time, his delivery and his morbid sense of humor had such a profound impact on my life. Like, I don't it, like if I had to compare my humor to someone, it's it's I would say it's normal down because I'm just such a sicko, I, dude. Like, no joke. And I know I could say this to you because like you you know how we are. Like when I just saw Michael Cash, yeah. you know, he was talking about coming over next Monday for the podcast. And I right. said, you know, well, let me make sure everything's cool with Aaron's dad and everything like let's play it by ear and everything but i said but and then i stopped and i go well i forgot you do do things in the funeral home business so maybe you still will have to come over monday and talk to aaron Ugh. and i was like god i'm such a piece of shit why did yeah. i just say that but you know um god forbid uh if there is a god i don't know but yeah uh i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm like this yeah that's who you are that's who you're I just am. a rotten piece of shit please forgive me i my favorite was uh i probably said this before on the show but uh, the Norm Show. I do. Or maybe it was show. just called Norm. Norm. Yeah, it was yeah. Norm. And he was, <laughs> he was like a, this hockey player that got caught betting on hockey or something. Yeah. And, and it, so he had to become like a kid's counselor. Yeah. Um, but I, <laughs> the best episode was there was this one where uh, his buddy's dad was gay and he kept buying him gifts. Yes. Yeah, and, it's 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 played by the guy who uh, also played his uh, his dad in Dirty Work. Yes, who's also the grandpa in Problem Child. But I forget yep. his name. Yeah, and I just remember him saying, uh, "Oh, that's a lovely top you have on there." And Norm goes, "Thanks, it's a shirt." <laughs> and the other one was Norm's telling somebody how gay this guy is, and the guy doesn't understand. Like, uh, you know, it's his dad or whatever. He goes, "He's, he's gay." And he's like, "No, no, he's a, he's gayer than a gay dollar bill." Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so ridiculous. R.I.P. Norm. God damn it! Too much death on this show. Um, Josh Newman, Josh Excellence from Patreon asked, "Are you excited for the new movie Twisters? You guys, fans of the OG Twister, and what's your favorite disaster movie?" Um. Well, I think I've mentioned it before. Fun fact, Twister is the first movie ever released on DVD. Okay, I don't know why I know that. Um, but also, I, I, I'm I not really excited about the new Twister movie. Apparently, it has none of the original cast. It's a, a completely standalone sequel. Um, I like the original. My favorite disaster movie, though. Um, that's a tough call. I, 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 I did like Twister. Armageddon was good, uh, in its day. Um, if you can count it, I will pick Sharknado, the Sharknado <laughs> series, because it's so ridiculous. Um, gosh, I'm trying to think of, uh, another disaster movie. What, what, what do you got? Uh, well, I've never seen Twister. Okay. I'm not looking forward to this other one, because I... It's not my thing, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, this one, <laughs> it's funny because it's called Twisters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like the same thing, but just it's, there's an S. It's plural. Um, I don't know, Titanic? Oh, yeah, I guess that would be a disaster movie, huh? Yeah, but uh, 
I it's only my favorite disaster movie because it's the first thing I could think of right now. And then also I went on a date to see it and didn't realize this motherfucker was gonna be like three hours long. <laughs> Oh, which yeah. kind of put the kibosh on coming home and doing a little something, something yeah, afterwards. That's unfortunate. And then, um, uh, but the girl I took was so hot. Mm. Oh my gosh! And uh, I blew it. Uh, it was just, it was terrible. I thought I was being cool. I told her I wanted to meet her mother right away because oh, I thought, I thought she would be into that. Yeah, and that's she what you was. Do, right? Yeah, and she was like, "Oh, I thought we were, you know, we were just gonna do it and stuff," but. Mm. Now you want to meet my family, and then she stopped dating me. Well, so thanks for bringing it up, though. Sorry. Who, who who was that? Justin Bonifield. That was Josh Excellence. F Josh Excellence. Sorry. You know Dante's Peak was good in its time as well. Uh, what P- Pierce Brosnan, uh, Bronson, whatever his fucking name is, James Bond. Uh, that was a good movie, like '97, I believe. Um, who else is from Patreon that gave us questions this week? Let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Let's let's do some Facebook ones. Uh, Bob Smith, no relation. If you could right. be That's any movie villain, name. which one would it be, and what and what would you do to change the outcome from defeat to victory? Um, wow, God, I would have to spend some time on that. So, not only my favorite movie villain, but someone that fails miserably in the end, and uh, I would ha- somehow have to beat the superhero. Huh. Boy. I'll be um I'll be shooter McGavin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I will lose the bet to Happy Gilmore. Okay. But I will still burn down the house and piss on the ashes. Wow. That's messed up, because dude. Then that's a victory. Hmm. You know what? Listen, it's com- the, the the last season coming out this week. Johnny. Johnny from freaking Karate yeah. Kid, dude. Because you know what? That kick was illegal. He always was like a sort of a tweener. I wouldn't say he's a good guy, but he wasn't necessarily the bad guy. Hey, he got picked on. Uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel did instigate a lot of those fights. I, I, I'm saying uh, the crane kick gets thrown, okay, lands it on Johnny, and the ref's like, Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> and, <it's> all, <laughs> and everything stops in its track. Okay, we yeah. just saw Mr. Miyagi heal this motherfucker, okay, uh, in the locker room. But now everything stops because Johnny just got kicked in the fucking face. And they're like, dude, you can't do that. And so then, like, they're they're going to call it in Johnny's favor, right? But then yeah. Johnny courageously is like, no, no, I got to keep going. And Crease is like, you got to keep going. He's like, I'm going to keep going. And then they keep going. And something happens where Johnny prevails in the end. With something uh, very, very legal. I say Crease does a run-in, okay? After he sees his boy get illegally kicked and the match is given to to, uh, Danielson. So, Crease comes in. He goes to hit Johnny with uh, maybe a kendo stick or something. He's going to hit Johnny? I'm sorry. uh, He's going to hit Danny. Okay. like The dude already got kicked in the face. (laughs) He's going to hit Danny. Yeah. And Johnny... Pushes Danny out of the way and takes the bullet for him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then they respect each other, and they each grab a side of the trophy and hold it up together, and it's the first time ever that there has been co-winners of the All-Valley no, Karate no. Tournament. Jo- no, listen. Hold listen. on. And then Bad News Brown comes in, and he gives the ghetto blast no. to him and breaks the trophy. No, 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 listen. Johnny's got to sweep the leg for the victory. <laughs> sweep the leg. Uh, not exactly legal, but uh, not more or less illegal than a fucking crane kick to the goddamn nose. So, uh, yeah, I think that's my pick there. Um, okay. Andrew Broca, I believe he was also once known as the uh, Casey Blood, asked two part question Can we expect the debut of Naj the Wild Samoan in Cleveland at SmackDown slash SummerSlam? And will he side with Solo or Roman? Discuss. Um, <laughs> again, as a reminder, Naj the Wild Simone was an um, incredibly terrible athlete, uh, if you want to call him that, a uh, pro wrestler that wrestled for Pro Wrestling Ohio, um, despite wishes from Johnny Gargano and myself. And um, 
he was barely trained. And um, <clears throat> to kind of put in perspective um, what we were looking at with Naj the Wild Samoan, he was, uh, I would say, about 5'6", probably about uh, 350 pounds. And uh, when he was asked where he, he wanted to be announced from, uh, Naj the Wild Samoan said um, wanted to be from Tonga. To which um, Joe Dombrowski replied, you do know that's a different place than the Isle of Samoa, right? And uh, he just stared at him. So hey, Yokozuna was announced from Japan. Well, he was also portrayed as a Japanese individual. It wasn't like he was coming out with a Samoan flag. And then they're like, hailing from Japan, Yokozuna. Like, I mean, come on. Was um, it your favorite when Hulk Hogan cut the promo and said Yokozuna Stinko Buna? I don't remember that. I just remember yeah. King of the Ring and the lead up to it. He said Yokozuna Stinko Buna. I gotta look that up because I don't remember that at all. But I believe it. But and I then mean, I, that was the point where I was like, you know what? I'm done being a Hulkamaniac. Oh, it wasn't before that months earlier at WrestleMania Nine where uh, he said in his promo uh, it, it, uh, using the slur. Um, I don't care who wins the WWF title, if it's Bret Hart or the Jap. I mean, that didn't make you stop being a Hulkamaniac? You no. Okay. You're still a Hulkamaniac. <laughs> Hulk Hogan has made some mistakes in his lifetime, okay? Um, I, I don't... You know what? I can't even condone that one because that was the character Hulk Hogan saying that. Fuck, man. I, ah, God damn it, dude. Naj is not going to join the bloodline, okay? If he does, if he gets a contract before me, I'm I'm through. I'm through with this life. I'm through with this world because it is it is truly unfair. So, and I don't know what I did in past You life. know what? And if Johnny heard you say that, I bet he would go out of his way to get Naj a contract. Um, we should probably wrap it up here. We do have more questions, but maybe we'll save them for next week, or maybe we'll answer some of them on Patreon because we uh, we have gone longer than we wanted to. So, um, hey, um, we are sorry that uh, we are a day late on recording this. Obviously, you're still getting it at the regular time if you're on iTunes or wherever you download podcasts. And we do apologize if there's also not any uh, big extras this week because of the stuff that. Uh, Aaron's going to be going through, and then he's going through, and so, uh, you know, we got to do this on a specific schedule with all the events happening, but uh, thank you for your patience with us. Thanks for continually coming back and supporting us. It means a lot, and uh, support us again next week. We're here every Wednesday at 10 p.m., and, uh, of course, we're early on patreon.com slash ironwrestling, where you get the shows early. You get a buttload of bonus content. We have hundreds of in hundreds of episodes in the archives that uh, have been specifically bonus episodes for the Patreon, but also extended versions of regular episodes that you've probably never heard. $5 gets you in the door with bonus video as well. You get some of our Patreon videos early, $9. You get involved in Zoom chats and pick bonus subjects and get priority on questions. You go up and up in tiers and get stuff in the mail from us. We'll be sending out another package in September. Um, so be on the lookout for that. You want to be involved for at least two months to get that package. And uh, you can follow us on social media, Iron on Wrestling, on all social media platforms. You can follow me on social media. I'm Gregory Iron on Twitter, Gregory underscore Iron on Instagram, Facebook.com slash The Handicapped Hero, ProWrestlingTees.com slash Gregory Iron for my shirts, Aaron shirts, Rod Destiny shirts, Iron on Wrestling shirts. We got it all over there. Shirts made by one of the Ortiz. Yes, that is very true. Cameo, if you want a shout out for me, if you want to book me for pro wrestling, motivational speaking, or pro wrestling seminars, hit me up on any of my social media platforms. Aaron, what would you like to plug? At Fair to Aaron on Instagram. And then whatever else. Find me, Google me, whatever. I guess we should also point out that you will be commentating. This Saturday afternoon for Mega Championship Wrestling? Well, uh, uh, let's hold off on that. You'll probably be commentating. Right? You know what? There should be no reason that I can think of why you wouldn't be there. Right? Nothing happening in your life? Oh, okay. Um, But, I mean, I'll be there for sure. I'll be there in the afternoon. Show starts at uh, 1 p.m., 
or 1.30 p.m., one of those times. I don't have the exact time in front of me. Get there by 1 p.m. then, I guess, um, in the afternoon for Mega Championship Wrestling this Saturday Get in Elyria, there at 12.45 Ohio. for the hot dog cookout. Also just announced I'll be at Roofless Pro Wrestling that night in Chicago, Illinois. I'm returning to the Berwyn Eagles Club. I'm going to be teaming with my brother, Zach Thomas, and we're going to be taking on the team of Faith in Nothing, Ricky Shane Page and Vincent Nothing, and uh, I do have another show for Mega uh, in the Elyria area on Sunday, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to get all the details for that. So just keep a lookout to my social media for all the deets on that. And that's it. So until next week, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we appreciate you and your time. And uh, why don't we do a little kiss goodbye? <laughs>